Welcome to the brand new snacking podcast where we try snacks new and old and ask the question, you tried that? Welcome to You Tried That. I'm Nick Novak. We're here with my two good friends, Chad Hancock and Nick Geiger. How are you doing, guys? Doing good. Yeah, what's up? So the, the purpose of this podcast here is for us to take a look at some new snacks and stuff we haven't tried before or stuff that has been a while since we tried and see what we think about it and let you know what you think. So uh, before we get started, we thought it'd be good to give you some insight into into the uh, hosts here. So let's start with our man, Chad Hancock. Chad, you are known to us as a tra- well-traveled man who travels to various countries, <laughs> tries sure? all k- different kinds of food, and then comes home and pigs out on Reese Cubs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair to say that, um, that uh, yeah, I'm a fat sack. But, uh, yeah, I, it's, well, it's interesting because I used to, growing up, never eat anything. <laughs> like, I grew up on a diet of just mac and cheese and uh, hot dogs, and that was about it. But yeah, since lately we've been taking a lot of vacations and like I've been trying all these foods that I, ne- you know, that I never would have tried before. And uh, and so now when we go, I like to try like all these different snacks. Like we were just in Laos and Southeast Asia. And so I was like buying as many like random Laotian candy bars as possible. Pretty much decided that most of them are better than most of the things we get here in the U.S. Yeah, when I met you in high school... You didn't eat anything. Right. Much of anything. I, I didn't either. But uh, now you've become – now you basically will eat anything, right? Yeah, so I'll eat anything, but I still hate most of it, which is weird. Like, you know, I don't like spicy stuff. I don't like uh, tomatoes at all, which means, like, if tomatoes are in any kind of dish, I usually hate it, which includes things like pizza. But, yeah, but then I really love Reese's Cups, probably my favorite thing on the planet. Where do your snacking preferences fall in terms of the sweet and salty? I definitely have a huge sweet tooth, so yeah, I will eat, like, just anything chocolate, I'll eat it, and chocolate and peanut butter is, like, the best combo in the world. You're the guy I think of when, like, a new candy comes out, I'm like, oh, Chad is going to want to try that, like, especially, like, a new chocolate or something like that. Yeah, if I'll try any any Oreo thing, I'll try, so I've tried, like, most of those, like, crazy Oreo flavors, and then, yeah, any new, like, Hershey or Reese's product or something like that, I'll usually try. Yeah, you usually – I think of you as a friend who sends me pictures of snacks. <laughs> <laughs> what we're saying is you have always tried that. <laughs> yeah. Geiger, uh, what uh, – tell us a little about your past and snacking preferences. I am somebody who really enjoys eating in general, and I always have. But, like, when I was younger, I could do it pretty much whatever I wanted, and it wouldn't affect me physically. Whereas that has stopped now. So, like, it would have been nothing for me to whole, eat, like, a whole bag of Tostitos during a Packers game growing up. And now I still do that. I just feel like that. <laughs> so, uh, I like, I'll try anything once. I really enjoy, like, going out to nice restaurants, eating different food, trying different stuff. But I also enjoy utter crap. So, like, my actual concern, Chad said he was worried that, like, well, not worried, but. Chad said, oh, I'm probably going to hate most of this stuff or whatever. I'm actually worried going in that I'll just like anything. Like I, I'm, It's going to be indiscriminate. Like, yeah, I'd eat that, sure. My palate is maybe not as discerning as others. But um, I'm as far as to, like the thing I think of when I want a snack, I'm definitely more of a salty person. Uh, and it's usually just chips. Like, I don't even – pretzels are fine to me, but I enjoy, like, Cool Ranch Doritos or, like, um, like chips and salsa or – Something like that. Some chip-based snack is usually what I look for. All right. And I'm definitely – I grew up really picky and have expanded some, but I still have the reputation of being a, a pretty picky eater. Candy-wise, I'm all chocolate. I, I will eat chips at a party. I rarely buy bags of chips, but whenever I get a chance, which is almost daily – I stop and get some kind of candy bar. I could literally just eat candy bars nonstop. So for me, it's a, it's a candy thing. And uh, we're going to get a little of everything on, on this show here. The first of which, Chad, why don't you give us a background into these Deep River sour cream and onion chips? So the first thing we're going to try here, <clears throat> Deep River snacks, sour cream and onion 
kettle cooked potato chips. Yeah, I'm not a huge chip guy, but when I do eat chips, my favorite is sort of like the waffle cut or crinkle cut, as it's sometimes called. I think that's the superior type of chip. So, like, you know, I used to eat, like, Ruffles a lot or that sort of thing, but not a big fan of, like, just plain Lay's. So at the grocery store by me out here, we have uh, we have this Deep River Snacks company that they have lots of different flavors. So they'll have, they have like, you know, like a jalapeno flavor or something. They also have, like, like a Maui onion kind of thing. But my favorite is this one that's this crinkle-cut sour cream and onion. And so what I'll do a lot of times is the grocery store has a little deli in it. So I'll get like a, you know, like a sandwich from the deli and then just like a bag of these chips. And that's like, the, you know, maybe like a root beer or something. And it's like the perfect dinner. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. So I, <clears throat> sorry, my voice keeps cracking. So I <laughs> mailed, <laughs> cause uh, you know, Janice, I'm 12 years, 12 Janice years 50. old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's not true. I'm 38. Wait, did you just say it was the perfect puberty. dinner? Yeah. Like sandwich and bag of chips. Is that a weird dinner? Okay. I picture that more long. Well, I could be. No, yeah, not just the chips. Good. I'm not saying just chips is a perfect dinner. I mean, you got to have something else. So you right. guys, like, serving size-wise, if someone just – so these chips came in, like, kind of small, like, individual serving bags. Uh, it is two ounces of chip. It seems like more than that. You remember doing that wrong. But, like, I, I'm someone that if you give me, like, that bag, I'll eat that. If you give me a bigger bag – I'll eat the bigger bag. Like, I'll just, <laughs> whatever the container is full of, I typically eat. Like, are you guys more like, is this enough chip to satisfy you for like a day or two? Or is this like, or would you eat more if more were available, I guess? Uh, I am fine with the small bags of chips. And I'm, that's become a huge thing now that the sh- sub shops got popular and they all have the chips sitting right yeah. there. So uh, I feel like I get these smaller chips. When we were kids, it was everyone buys those big 24 or 36 cases with like the potato strings in them and and uh you take them for lunch every day yeah um, but then as an adult now it's pretty much if i go to a sub shop or something i'll get this bag of, this is almost too small for a gas station size bag of chips now yeah because i'll do that with the, like jake, we'll get uh for my son jake we'll get like a big carton of that like you said with individually wrapped like goldfish things uh and then i'll eat like four of them so i don't know maybe they're the point of the podcast is I, have I thought problem. they were for your son, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> and then my son goes hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this is like a perfect size for me, for like to, as like a side dish to go along with something. Like any any more than this, and uh, then I'll just start feeling like this horrible glutton, and I'll be like, all right, I need to go for like a like a two hour run or something <laughs> to just like not feel bad about this. Geiger, let's say someone brought you a sandwich with these chips, right? Yeah. And But they brought a box full of these bags. So that makes it so that you could potentially stop at each bag, but there's more bags available. So what would you do in that case? Yeah. So am I by, <laughs> am I by myself or am I even like with other people that I want to have some sort of modicum of respect for me. Your son's there, and he are, has already lost oh, respect for you. So. Yeah, okay, he's seen me. <laughs> My son is going, why can't I have any of those chips, Daddy? And I'm like, leave me alone. No, um, it, how, big is the, how big is the sandwich? Like, we're talking like a Jimmy John sandwich, like that yeah. kind of size. I, you know what? For lunch, I would do one. Yeah, like I, So when I go to Jimmy John's for work, like I'll get a sandwich in a bag of these chips, which I feel like the Jimmy John chips are about the same size as this bag. That's fine. If I had, I'm not going to cry about it. So I would say probably two, but after that, it would be gross. I do have a linen. It's just like I'm more of a – I'm a, when it comes to snacking, I can just do it, like, mindlessly for a long time, which is bad. All right. Should we dig into these things? Yeah. yeah. Everyone is dying to hear us crinkle bags and crunch chips. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, of course, tried these before, but Let, neither this, of you guys have. This should be noted, too, that we are in three different locations recording this so we're just kind of watching each other yeah. eat on skype and uh chad actually is in california so these i don't i've never seen these before around here no. so this might be Me neither. Yeah, you guys are outside chicago right it should be noted that i wanted to eat these like an hour ago <laughs> <laughs> but i didn't for just Let's listen ago. for the the crunch <laughs> So what is it you love about them, Chad? Well, yeah, they just have like a, a good salty flavor. I really like the sour cream taste in it. And um, just sort of like a little hint of onion, like it's not overpowering. And then, of course, 
the fact that they're, you know, the crinkle cut is really what uh, what seals the deal for me. What do you guys think? I think this is sort of right up my alley for chips because I like a sturdier chip. It's solid. Like, it's a little on the thicker side. I like crinkle cut. That would definitely be my choice over a non-crinkle. And while I like sour cream and onion, I hate sour cream and onion chips when the flavor is super overpowering. And this is r- really toned down, and they are really salty, which is the other key. It sort of checks off most of the boxes I would have for what I would want from this chip. Kaji? What do you think, Iger? Leave me alone. I'm eating. Uh, no, um, <laughs> I, I would agree. Like, I, I actually do prefer, like, a thinner chip more than, like, a crinkle cut, but these are good. And I agree with Novak that, like, I think if you got, like, the um, – Lays like sour cream or whatever. It's like super tang, like almost overly sour cream and oniony. Like the onion powder is like really lay- layered on there, and these aren't that. Like these are pretty. It tastes like sour cream and onion, but it's not overpowering. These are really good. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I liked about them is if you compare them, yeah, to those sort of like Lays brand or whatever, the the more mainstream sour cream and onions, which I think can definitely be a little too much. You know, these are sort of like a better version of that. This is a a chip. I like a sturdier chip because you can dip it. But do you? Does anyone dip a sour cream and onion chip? No. In what? More sour in cream. Sour cream. <laughs> sour cream. Sour, sour cream, cream mixed with onions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has anyone made their own sour cream and onion dip? I don't where know. does sour Where does sour cream rank for you guys, just in terms of flavor? Like original barbecue, any other popular ones? Mm. Where would sour cream be? As far as chip types, um, yeah, I think it's actually up there. Like, um, like I could go, I could go like with a barbecue chip, but most of the time, actually, I'm usually just getting like plain chips. Like, I usually don't don't get flavored chips all that much because I'd rather just get the plain chips and then like dip them in something interesting. Mm-hmm. I think for the common versions, like excluding like the weird ones, you find it might be like number two. Actually, I really, I I'm not as huge on barbecue chips as other people. They're fine. I could give or take them. I think regular is probably the best, and then sour cream and onion might be second, unless I'm forgetting one. All right. I like sea salt and vinegar, too. That's that's pretty good. Oh, sometimes. yeah, that's true. Those are really good. No, I probably do All kinds of – I would probably go original, but I kind of like the new takes on the original, like salt and pepper chips or uh, yeah. just like the uh, – one. there's certain ones like sea salt and things like that that aren't that far off but are kind of improvements on that just original taste. Uh, but sour cream and onion would be close. It's, for me, way better than barbecue. Yeah, so like regular sour cream and onion and then chocolate chips are your third, right? Chocolate chips. <laughs> oh. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> what if they made a, like a Lay's potato chip that was chocolate flavored? There is some kind of chocolate covered potato chips. Yeah, I've had one. I don't remember where, like if I got it at like a fair or something. It was fine. Well, you are from Wisconsin where right. they will fry... <laughs> Right. And eat literally anything. Yeah. What's the weirdest crap you've seen at a Wisconsin fair? Ugh. Like weirdest crap or weirdest food? Because I've got both. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, like the most disgusting, the thing we always get made fun of the most recently, I don't know. Who's the um... most disgusting person you've ever seen there? Describe him. <laughs> Besides the guy I see in the mirror. Uh, <laughs> my dad? Just kidding, Dickie G. He'll never Uh... No, like, I, so recently the food stuff I've gotten made fun of the most about being a Wisconsinite, especially at work, is Lambeau Field. I don't know if you guys remember when we were there, uh, the where the Packers play, they had that horse collar, and it's yeah. like two pounds of Polish sausage wrapped in pretzel covered in sour sauerkraut and, like, Thousand Island dress. It would cost, like, $25 and looked horrible. <laughs> Um, I have told many people about that horse collar right. whenever I'm, like, relating my experience about going to Lambo, The first thing I mention is, and they had this dish right. that, like, all these people were eating. And it's great, it's so like, disgusting. in my office in Chicago where a bunch of, like, fat Chicago Bears fans coming up and being like, typical Wisconsin. And I'm like, how are you? It's the same shit. Like, it's a, you're, you're the same people, just you have a nicer city in your state. That's basically the only difference. But. That kind of stuff. Everything is doused in cheese in Wisconsin. So, like, fried cheese curds covered in cheddar sauce, bratwurst stuff. I don't know. Lots of crap. We are we are all sports fans, but, Chad, you are the most likely to go to a sports game and then post pictures of the food you ate there. <laughs> post to the sports game. Yeah, we just went to, uh, we just went to a Golden State Warriors game, uh, like, two weeks ago. 
And um, the thing I was most excited about was like, oh, I've never been to uh, Oracle Arena. Like, what kinds of food do they have there? <laughs> right. And so, like, we got there, like, maybe half hour before the game started, and I spent, like, 15 minutes just walking around the arena, like, looking at the different food stands, like, trying to decide, like, what I was going to order. Mapping out your game, like, first quarter, I'll get this, second quarter, this. <laughs> yeah, and I ended up, uh, I ended up pretty basic, actually. I got, like, a hot, I just wanted to do standard, so I got, like, a hot dog, a pretzel, and some, like, garlic fries. They actually had really good garlic fries there. Which is interesting, because out here in San Francisco, like, the giant stadium, AT&T Park, is what's known for their, like, amazing garlic fries. Like, everybody raves about the garlic fries there, but I actually thought they were much better at the Warriors Stadium. All right, let's get to some ratings on these these Deep River Sour Cream and Onion Kettle Cook. Do you want to explain the rating scale? All right, so... <laughs> Let me explain the podcast <laughs> name first. Uh, when we were, we're coming up, trying to come up with a name for this thing, and uh, I made it just said you tried that as a joke, and lo and behold, that was the name. <laughs> a month later, when we are recording, we never came up with anything better than that. So, um, but so the rating we're basing off that there's five levels. We have a, a loved at. Like that, and the middle level, indifferent to debt, <laughs> or something else, or or medium debt, but some kind of middle level, which will will work out, and then a dislike debt and hate debt. So on a, it's a five point scale, and we'll start with the uh, innovator, Chad Hancock. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I mean, I was already biased for these. I love these. I get them all the time. So uh, yeah, for me, this gets a very strong love debt. All right, Geiger. Whew, um, here's my problem. This, this is where they all start to blend together for me. I, I, these are good. Other chips are good, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all chips are probably going to be like that for me. No, um, I would say, no, these are really good, though. I actually second Chad's. I would say love that. These are really tasty. All right, so two love dads. I'm uh, going to go a little bit off where I do really like these chips and – as I mentioned, they hit a lot of the points I would want. I wouldn't probably be going out of my way to get them or eating them again. So I would say I'm going to give them a like that, which gives them two likes and a love. So a highly recommended chip uh, from the three of us. Yeah, we highly recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, pretty interesting. Uh, let's move on to our next one. And this is a Reese product. And there's a big old fat 50% off sticker. <laughs> I did find these in the uh, clearance uh, aisle at Safeway. It looks like the uh, the expiration date is 218, so we're a couple good for a couple weeks. It looks like just under the yeah, that's why they were 50% off because uh, they're yeah we're getting them just under the wire here. But, uh, <laughs> so these are the um, these are the honey roasted Reese's cups. So I've I've actually seen these in the store before, but but never bought them. Uh, I'm not sure why. This is exactly the kind of thing I would buy, but like uh, I think I don't know. I just had other crap going on at the time or whatever. But like I haven't seen them that much. So like it was a while since I saw them, and I was always kind of like, oh, I didn't get to try those when those were there. So then I was super excited to see them on the clearance aisle. So yeah, I picked up a couple, sent them out to you guys. Right off the bat, I mean I love Reezy Cubs. Just in the top. Yep. It's either one or one A of my candy bar preferences, um, and but I get a little picky. You, now, do you get a, ever get a Reese cup that feels just like too soft, or it's not quite the right consistency because of maybe time on the shelf or something like that? Yeah, sometimes the peanut butter is just like maybe a little too powdery for some reason. Yes, um, and that's like super disappointing when that happens. Huh? No, I've never. <laughs> <laughs> All of them are the same. The only no. time it's different to me, like when you open it up, like if it's been in your pocket or like been on the shelf, and it's I, like, yeah, it got like kind of squished up. How often, never are you up and be... <laughs> How often are you carrying them in your pocket? Well, I mean, maybe I'll eat one and then I don't, never. But I, I guess the point, like I've never, <laughs> I've never opened it and thought it was too chalky. That's interesting. I guess. Are you the kind of person that opens it up and takes one bite and then you're like, this needs more like jeans fabric. And so you just put it <laughs> loose in your pocket. Yeah. Usually I'll eat one and then I'll wash the other one in the laundry. And then I want to bring it out. No. Uh, <laughs> Would there be any circumstance that... 
you would put a Reese cup into your pants pocket because I, I could con- yeah. I could conceive of buying it at the store and like putting it in my coat pocket as I walked out. No, like you mean like the loose, like it's out of the packaging. No, no, even in the package in no, your in pants. Package, oh, <laughs> when the kids are going trick or treating and they're dropping stuff all over the place, I'm often just grab. Like I find myself just scooping it up and putting it in my my coat pocket or my pants pocket. Either way, it gets like kind of melty. No, your coat pocket and pants pocket are. Two different stories. I'm not – okay, to be clear, it's the front pocket. It's not like the back pocket where I'm sitting on them. I don't know. Maybe – I have I, I have put them in my cargo pocket before. There like you go. just loose in my cargo pocket as like a snack for later, but – Maybe my pants are too tight because I can't even picture – No, Vic, you hipster. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You just, wanna, you just put it in your pants pocket and everybody's <laughs> like uh, – is that a Reese's in your pocket or – Yeah. You got a really big square. <laughs> yes, what are we doing? Okay, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Let's. Uh... So, I, so the the question for me is, having never tried these, like, will we actually be able to tell the difference of these between like a regular Reese's cup? I can already it's smell a difference. Right? If you it's smell it, good. smell it first. It smells different to me. Yeah, you're right. Oh, it does. It smells like a lot more oh, peanutty. Oh, yeah, it does smell different. Yeah, it smells. It does smell more peanutty for some reason. Like a real peanut, not like the... Right. Now, <laughs> whatever the hell I've been putting in my body all these years. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's give these a let's go. Let's give it a go. Hmm. I think it's sweeter. Yeah. Am I crazy? Definitely sweeter. That's weird to say because Reese's Cups are like one of the sweeter snacks, I feel like. There's definitely a difference. I'm trying to detect what it is. For me, you can taste some honey in there. Yeah, this just what feels like sweeter. This almost feels like somebody took a regular Reese's cup and like just either like poured a bunch of honey all over it or like soaked it in like a jar of honey for like a day and then gave it to you. Some monster trying to spread diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't feel like it's different enough for me to. Like, not either one, not eat it, or two, pick this off the shelf over the regular Reese's. I don't think I would pick this over regular. Maybe that's just because I'm used to regular. Yeah, it's almost, I almost think it's almost too much. Like, almost too much sweetness. It's still good. The aftertaste is worse, I think. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Now, have you guys tried all the, like, crazy Reese's that they've been coming out with? Like, they have... Reese's that are filled with Reese's pieces, and then they have Reese's cups that are filled with, um, like, little cookie crumbs that kind of look like Oreo bits. Uh, have you tried either of those? I definitely tried the one with the miniature Reese's pieces inside it. Yeah. And I just thought it was, like, I, I didn't get it. I, I like it, To me, I'd rather just eat, because by nature, then, to me, it makes the peanut butter area thicker because they got to fit all that stuff in, and it throws off the ratio of what makes the, like to me the Reese's Pieces cup is good because it's just the right amount of actual peanut butter and chocolate. And if you make it like thicker in the middle to fit all that other stuff in, if I'm thinking of the right one, it, well, like, so throws they made that a off. big cup version. I think you're thinking of the big oh, cup okay, version, yeah, that is which what they I'm made, about. but they also did make a regular size that's the same as. Oh, the okay, order. I did not have that one. No, I think they're getting a little out of control with the new. Brands. I know you like. That's the reason you get up in the morning, Hancock. But <laughs> sometimes it's I'm like another new. I just I feel like ninety percent of the time, I just want the regular one. Yeah, yeah. I I was a little disappointed in the the Reese's Pieces Inception Cup, which like was it was good and like the texture was nice, but like yeah, I didn't feel it added enough. <laughs> The one I did like was the one that had, like, the little Oreo-style cookie bits in it. I still didn't prefer it to regular, but, like, it added, like, sort of, like, a nice crunch when you bit into it without, like, adding so was it, too much sweetness. It was peanut butter with Oreo cookie bits in it? Yeah, they don't call them Oreo because it's a different right, company right. or whatever. They just call it, like, cookie crumbles or something. But they're, like, pretty clearly, like, little tiny Oreo, like, black Oreo bits. Hydrox bits? <laughs> it was Hydrox. Was there was a... Hydrox. Now, was there a tie-in to the movie Inception? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Did each one of them taste a little bit like Leonardo DiCaprio? <laughs> <laughs> so delicious? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Geiger, let's start with you on this one. Um, I am not a fan. I ate both, but I am not a fan. 
<laughs> These are terrible. No, wrong, 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 pretty wrong. awful. Do you have any more? I like, like you said, no. Like there was no way, shape, or form. Like if someone handed me one and said, "Here, I have this," I'd probably eat it. But I would what never would pick this. Huh? What would you not eat if someone handed you? <laughs> uh, if they had already chewed it up, eat it. Probably would eat it again. No, I'm kidding. Um, there are. I, I just don't. I would never choose this over regular Reese cup. It's way too sweet for me. I also don't really like honey that much as a flavor. Like we used to, when we were kids, sometimes put honey on our like cluttered toast with honey on it, and I really didn't like it. I've never really liked honey. I don't like bitto honey. You were forced to put honey on your toast. My mom just gave it to me. Yeah. I, <laughs> and then afterwards, when we get a choice, I would never take it. So. I uh, the honey to me threw it off and made it too sweet. I was not a fan. What's, it's not the worst one. What's the worst one? Uh, hate the it. Steel. You're just gonna I go dislike that. it. I would say this dislike is... that. I really okay. didn't like it that much. Wow, bold words. Yeah. All right, um, I'll go next. I was definitely a little disappointed. Honestly, I'd eat it because it's not that far off from a Reese cup to me. Um, and I will say this had a little bit of that powdery consistency, like just borderline that uh, Chad and I talked about hating with the Reese cup. Maybe if you but had stuck it in your pocket a little while, it warmed I up. I know. I'd... <laughs> Next time, I got to pocket this a little bit longer, I think. <laughs> but this time, I could take it or leave it. I, I would eat it, but I'm really – it's more of a disappointment at just – why? Like the, I could see why some of them exist, like a white chocolate or something or other, because it's different enough. This just makes no sense to me why it was made. So uh, I'm just going to do an, an indifferent to debt. <laughs> Jed, what do you think? Can't really fault your logic there. Yeah, I think if I saw this on the shelves again, I would not buy it. I would just buy the regular. Even if it was 50% off and the regular were full price, I'd still, you know, shell out that extra 35 cents or whatever. <laughs> for the regular. Having said that, it's a Reese's, so I'm going to give it a like down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. All right, so... You have succeeded yeah. in your brand loyalty campaign. <laughs> well, I, I do own a Reese's Cups, or Reese's Peanut Butter mug, and two pillows that I bought when I was at Hershey Chocolate World in Pennsylvania. I think I'd rather eat one of your pillows. <laughs> what, it, what, like, what flavor combination would they have to put together where you'd be like, nah, just can't, like... Inside is like sriracha and ham or something. Like, what would you? I eat? actually, I actually don't like the white chocolate okay. Reese's cups. Those are like way too. Do you not like white chocolate in general, or just the cup? Mm, yeah, generally not. Yeah. Do they put peanut butter inside of white chocolate? That sounds gross. Yep. Anyway, yeah. anyway I, I sound like an infant who I've never <laughs> heard like, What? Yeah. <laughs> That sounds gross, but I just ate three of them. I just... <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I, I'm dedicated to this podcast. I can't just give one bite. And say it. You're so a man I, of research. A... I know that. So, so that is so we each kind of had so it averages out to an indifferent, an right. one indifferent, yeah, one like and one dislike. Yeah. So I think final score on this is uh, we don't really recommend right. that, but maybe if you want to try that, you could try that, <laughs> but probably skip that. <laughs> Uh, next up and last on the uh, group here today is the handy snack. And for anyone who grew up in the time period we did, you probably had a number of handy snacks in your lunch as a kid. Uh, oh, these smell just. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a Ritz. Handy snack is now a Ritz handy snack, which we were talking ahead of this show. We weren't sure if it previously was a Ritz handy snack or not, but. Basically, if you aren't familiar, is a a separated plastic container with crackers on one side and a cheese product on the other side. So, now, is this sure. cheese? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I'm lactose intolerant, and I'm not that worried. This doesn't. Work. <laughs> this is like yellow pudding. Novak, you said you ate these a bunch as a kid. Chad, did you? Uh, no, I never no, had. I never, never had a handy snack as a kid. Ever. Okay, that was just <laughs> a total uh, story about myself. Then, uh, <laughs> I mean, my parents fed me the most processed diet of crap that you could possibly eat. like. We would eat. I grew up thinking that Twinkies and Hostess cupcakes were a breakfast item. Um, oh God! Like we just ate nothing that wasn't 
made in a factory and then remade again. So I think uh, maybe it's just me. I grew up eating this stuff and I'm super used to it. Uh, Chad, why don't you share our uh, handy snack travel story? <laughs> Um, well, I'm, I might get some of the details wrong. It's been a while since I thought about it. But yeah, like back in college, so 18 or so years ago, we were, a couple of us were all traveling cross country in a van that we bought. There was like six of us and we all chipped in together, bought a van, started driving around. And uh, we had a bunch of snacks with us, including some handy snacks. And after what, like maybe a week, week and a half in the van of just like leaving the snacks in there during the heat of the day and everything else, they... Uh, <laughs> Like I don't remember who it was, but one of our friends it was tra- was eating some, and they the cheese was just like so disgusting. And I remember them saying like, "Oh, the cheese has turned." <laughs> <laughs> so since then, which was you know, which is half our life ago, um, we have done nothing but make. The only time we've ever talked about a handy snack is to say the cheese has turned. And, and I have not eaten one since that since that trip 18 years ago. Now, I do have a question. Didn't these used to come with, like, a little plastic spatula that you would like? That was what I was going to ask. I thought the same thing. That's like 100% a... the first thing I noticed when I picked them up for the podcast the other, the other day was that where is my small plastic red rectangle yeah. to spread the cheese? You know, I guess Because if I dip this cracker in there, it's going to break, isn't it? It's not like a – this isn't like some sort of sturdy tortilla chip. Now, normally, but this is not any kind of cheese you've ever <laughs> – <laughs> no. This is the ooze crack. I'm about to put on my cracker, yeah. All right. Is so, it time uh, to dig in here? So, so yeah. they must have cut out the rectangle for cost-cutting or something. I, I assume that's what it's it was. It's just too expensive to manufacture a handy snack these days. They put it back into the ingredients. I'm sure this we're is We're helping like the environment in two ways because we're not we're – not no longer having that red rectangle in the garbage, and we're also killing off the humans who are poisoning the planet. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to hurt the environment when I crap this out later. <laughs> Where am I doing now? What the... So we're dipping wow. the crackers and the cheese product. That is. Uh, I got to be honest. This is weird. That is a flavor. I I will. I'm just going to come out and say it, that I really like this cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What? You do? It's not cheese. There's something that the flavor is so no, nostalgic yeah. to me. I don't think the cheese has changed at all. Okay, now try the cracker without any cheese, like just by itself. It's basically inedible cardboard without the cheese. <laughs> it's bad. It's worse than a regular Ritz cracker. <laughs> oh my god! It's like it feels like I'm taking like a vanilla wafer cookie and dunking it into butter. Like the, <laughs> cheese, the cheese sauce just tastes like butter. It does. It's like melted butter with like with Have like I a bunch of salt in it. While? Interesting. I'm still eating it. Wow. Yeah, this does bring me back. Um, to the days of those fateful, that fateful van trip. Now, is this as hard as, like, is this the same consistency as the cheese that got the spatula used to have? No. Um, I hope it's hard for some reason. This, I feel like it's real similar. I don't think it's changed much. I think in my head I'm picturing, like, almost like a Merck cheese spread that's, like, kind of thicker and harder. I, I, thought, it, yeah, I thought it was harder before, yeah. The difference is Merck's cheese has some dignity, <laughs> and Handy Snacks has none. Chad, would you say you've been harder before? Well, you <laughs> this, I'm not even going to reply to that. <laughs> That's fair. This reminds That's fair. me of like, um, like the worst nacho cheese at like, you know what I mean? Like if you get nachos at like a movie theater or something and the cheese has been like, like I remember yeah. I used to work at a movie theater back in high school and like sometimes if you didn't change the cheese regularly enough, it would just get like... Just this nasty consistency and like, and we would still, because we're like 16 year old kids, we don't care. We'd still just like squirt it right on people's nachos and be like, here you go, give me $7 or whatever. This reminds me of like what would happen with that stuff. So this is the leftover cheese from the movie theater? Yeah, basically. <laughs> like the stuff that's at the bottom of that cheese bag that's been like. This is way better than the movie theater. When you have the bad movie theater cheese to me, it's not only, the consistency is not only bad and disgusting, but it also has like a really wrong level of spice that they're just trying to make it taste like spicy nacho cheese and it doesn't so i don't know this is i'm clearly alone on this and i'm fighting an uphill battle but this i, I would, love this butter <laughs> I, I would believe you chad if you said this was the actual cheese that you used that same day <laughs> 
Like you can tell, like there's probably like a receipt for X Men Two in here somewhere. <laughs> this is gross. <laughs> I do remember, yeah, one day it was really weird in the movie theater. A bunch of guys in, like, Ritz uh, polo shirts came in, and they just, like, wanted to take all of our stuff, and they're like, this is going to be great in 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you were able to surface that memory just in yeah, time for the what a coincidence. Do you think they put these in, uh, like, underground bunkers for uh, the, in case of the apocalypse? Wouldn't you rather I mean, yeah. die... In the apocalypse, then it's just staying only on this stuff. I mean, these are, yeah, these are definitely food that'll last a while. I To Chad's point, I'm not sure how much your quality of life is if you're sitting in a bunker or the rest of your family eating candy. I'm not sure these will last a while because mine, like, we just bought them the other day, and it says the expiration date is uh, February 27th, 2018. Really? Which is coming up. So, and also from personal experience, the cheese will turn. <laughs> Uh, let, well, real quick, what, what ingredients are in here? I'm trying to... Cheese dip. Okay. Che- cheddar cheese is like the fifth... Whey, water, like... canola oil, cheddar cheese. Okay, that, I guess that we'll list go... Is, that list is better than I thought, honestly. Yeah, yeah you're right. I thought it was going to be worse. It is long, though. That's not a good Maybe thing. Maybe I'm, I'm tasting more cheese cultures than I am cheese. Or... Yeah, okay. Anyway. All right. Let's get, get to these. Novak, you were the one that brought this to the table here, so... I'll start this one off, and... uh it was a it was a mistake to bring this because I'm only feeling bad about myself. <laughs> about <laughs> you, look, you don't feel as bad as I'm gonna feel later. <laughs> <laughs> so I recognize that they're not great, but I really enjoy eating it. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm really happy with myself. I couldn't eat, I don't think, a bunch of these. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the cracker is. Not good on its own, and probably worse than it used to be. I don't know who to blame on that, but, I mean, it's Ritz. It's their own product. They make a a better cracker, like, you know, in the next part of the factory over. So I'm I'm still going to say I'm going to give it a like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> and, you should be. <laughs> <it's> just, <laughs> That's not nobody, what you hear is me nodding in disapproval. To... Nobody ever – nobody will ever put stock into another rating I give, but <laughs> – <laughs> this is my I'm, this is my parents' fault, and uh, I'm just leaving hey, it. That's at. fair. So, Nostalgia uh, counts, counts for something. For sure. All right, yeah. Geiger, you clearly are at the total opposite end. So, what do you think? Yeah. Well, you hit on one of the things I was going to bring up is that the cracker is awful. First of all, just by itself, and this is a company built on crackers. Like Ritz is like their pr- their primary product is a really good buttery like. <laughs> well-made cracker, so I don't know why they didn't just put regular rich crackers in there, first of all. Second of all, like I said, the cheese, I, I don't, it didn't taste like cheese. It literally tasted like butter. It had the same consistency. It tasted just dairy-ish. Um, I'll eat anything, so I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm all fancy and too good for it. Again, if we were on a road trip, that's all we had. Whether or not they had turned, I would probably still eat one. But I am pretty much... Ugh, do I hate that, or do I dislike that? <laughs> Um, I'm going to say a strong dislike that. It's not like I couldn't put another one in my mouth, but I ate one cracker and I couldn't, okay. I had zero interest in eating more. You ate one? How much of the cheese did you eat? I All minimized exposure to the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I licked the entire container dry. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I got a fair amount. I would say half the cheese is gone. Oh, uh, well. On the one. <laughs> yeah. That's only I a just, year off your life, then. Right. I mean, the cheese is better than the cracker. It just still is gross. I don't know. And I don't have, like, the fond memories of growing up with this that you do. So. That's fair. It is gross, and I still like it. I, mean, I can't debate anything well, you said. I'm not judging. Trust me. We'll fair. get to some stuff that shouldn't be eaten that I'm going to enjoy. All right, but Chad. Not, not... So uh, we're split here pretty wide. What do you so think? So I'm going to agree with Geiger while simultaneously disagreeing with him. I think the cracker is better on its own than with the cheese. Um, I would, the cheese is what, uh, kills this thing for me. Uh, it's not, I mean, now I've become in the last couple years kind of like this, uh, cheese snob. Like, I don't even really like, like, Kraft Singles or American Cheese Slice anymore. I'm like, oh, if this burger doesn't have Gruyere on it, then I don't want to touch it. Or, you know, (laughs) that's basically me now. So yeah, this cheese really grosses me out. I would rather just eat the crackers plain. The crackers are bad, so I don't even want to eat them plain. Uh, so yeah, uh, hate that. Oh, all right. All right. So, uh, Geiger, let me ask you: Would yeah. you, 
if I spread this handy snack cheese all over a burger, mm-hmm. would you partake? <laughs> <laughs> is is are we in a situation where that's literally my only lunch? For like couple you're, in the, hours? you're in the bunker we referred to earlier. Oh, yeah, I mean if it's, if it's die by zombie or die by burger cut smeared and whatever rendered talcum powder, whatever the shit this is. No, I would not eat that. This it's not good. I mean, I could just put. I guess it tastes buttery. So yeah, act, okay. I talked myself back. I would eat it. I would understand. <laughs> I not understand why you're so. Especially okay. if we're in a bunker, we should. Save that and like ration the food out. <laughs> but yeah, it's okay. <laughs> no, okay. I'd probably eat a burger with the handy snack cheese on it. Just like, even if I was at a restaurant, they had it on a menu, I'd be like, all right, I'm curious, you know, I'll see that. And plus, like, I love a burger so much. Like, if it was a good, you know, patty or whatever. We live in a world where someone could make a restaurant called the Handy Snack Restaurant <laughs> and make all these fancy dishes made out of handy snack crackers and cheese. And a hipsters would go flying. I'm surprised it. that doesn't exist in San Francisco. You should probably stop talking and start designing. <laughs> uh, so Ted, you mentioned you mentioned real quick. You mentioned like oh, you're a cheese snob now, but you're also the guy I always think of for mac and cheese. Yes, right. So I know you like high end mac and cheese. We've been to some restaurants before together yeah. where you ordered that. Would you? Are you still above now eating like a regular old box of Kraft mac and cheese or no? No, I did that on Tuesday. Okay. <laughs> and, like, okay. my wife was, like, really floored that I was eating the entire box. Like, you know, like, I just poured the whole box in, and she's like, now, are you going to eat that whole thing or just, like, save some of it for later? And I'm like, no, of course I'm going to eat the whole box. Like, I was confused that there's a situation where you would only eat half of a box of mac and cheese, and she was confused that I was going to eat the whole box of mac and cheese. <laughs> Well, you no, guys are notorious I, for eating a whole box of pasta by, like, the Novak, you don't eat that much, and I, but you can eat, like, a, more pasta than I ever could in one sitting. Yeah. I think I got you beat everywhere else. That's why I think I'm totally with Chad here. The A mac and cheese full box is exactly a normal serving, and I'm actually a little disappointed now as I have two children, and they want to eat some of the box, and so I'm the amount of mac and cheese I get is significantly cut down, and it's a little upsetting. The sad part is, if you ever look at the nutritional information on a box of Kraft mac and cheese, like, the whole box is, like, a 1,000 calories. Like, it's a ton of calories. It's really bad for you, but meh, whatever. Do you guys make it as recommended? Like, I know they say you can use water or milk. Like, we always make it with the milk and the butter and all yeah, the actual. Yeah, you got to do it. There. Yes. The I usually spoon, help- spoon handy snack cheese into it, too. <laughs> <laughs> the kids help me because I would eat the whole box, but I shouldn't because, like I mentioned, I'm lactose intolerant, and that will destroy my innards. But so the kids eating some of it and keeping it away from my gluttonous face um, is actually helpful for both me and our plumbing in the house. I like okay. I I was just curious if you had graduated to a new level of mac and cheese entirely, or you had room for it. All right, so we, we've covered all three snacks, and it seems like the Deep River sour cream and onion was the clear winner today. But we will be back again to show you three new snacks, and our goal is to uh, each episode come up with three things that either uh, – hopefully you haven't tried before. We're going to try to stay away from the super common things and maybe uh, – give you an idea of some new things to try so uh, we'll close it off here and we'll be back next time for you next week